I am going to be talking today again, just kind of on part two. Um, the last time I talked about a thousand ways to set you free. And again, Psalm 130, verse 7. Keep hoping, keep trusting, keep waiting on the Lord, for he is tenderhearted, kind, and forgiving. And he has a thousand ways to set you free. And I've just so been... Um, Gosh, you know, sometimes people say, you know, they have a life verse. I think this is my season verse for sure because I just keep looking and looking and God just keeps reminding me that I've used this to set you free and that to set you free and this way to set you free. And I was talking last time after I taught and was just thinking, you know, like number 367, that was when I was in small group and they prayed over me and they prophesied this. And number 852 was when, you know, I was in um, discipleship with Teresa and number 400 and whatever. And just the Lord just reminding me of all the different ways and all the um, creative ways that he uses to set us free. And I just want to encourage us again tonight that all of our walks are different. Um, God works with each one of us individually. So I want us just to be really, I want to encourage us to be excited about each other when we hear each other's testimonies. And we go, man, you know what, Nancy, wow, she is so free. I want that. When we hear a testimony, we want to grab onto it and say, man, that one I want, I want that for myself. So I just encourage you um, in that. And then... Um, just a reminder that it is so a process that it takes time that this, like Pastor said, I've been here, you know, almost, I think, six years. And so it's just this process of God speaking and me receiving and then God speaking again and receiving again and listening. And a lot of things I jot down and I write it down and I go over it. I have so many things in my phone. And even as I was um, rereading all of this stuff to prepare um, to speak tonight, I reread it and I go, oh man, yes, that's what you think of me, God. Yeah, that's what you say about me. And you know what? When he says those things about me, he says them about you guys too. If he loves me, he certainly loves you guys. And so, um, um, one thing, I just wasn't sure where I was going to put this one, and I think um, I'm going to put it at the beginning because I was back there just, Lord, what do you, what do you want to say? Where do you want to start? And I just felt like he said, just tell them what I think of them, okay? So this was one of um, my testimonies, and this is part of where um, God has been just healing my identity, like who am I? And um, I just was worshiping with the Lord one day and just asking him, God, where were you? Where were you in all these different places in my childhood and in my growing up years and in my life? Where were you? And um, I didn't see anything. I didn't hear anything at first. And I thought, oh, what in the world? That's really weird. Like God's not answering, you know? And I just continued worshiping. And all of a sudden I realized Oh, he actually was answering. I just wasn't noticing it right away. And so this is what he said. And um, I find it so interesting, too, because we've been um, learning how to really speak life over people and prophesy over each other. And for me, that was really um, awkward, like I talked about last time, like trusting my voice that that would be um, something safe to speak over people. And so what I noticed that the Lord has been doing with me is um, having me practice over myself, if that makes sense. So basically when I'm worshiping and God starts speaking to me, I hear myself saying it out loud, what he is speaking to me, but I'm speaking it over myself. Okay, and I have gotten my small group knows, man, I'm starting to I'll speak out what I feel like the Lord is saying over people, too. So anyway, this is what the Lord spoke over to me. He said, hmm, listen to me, my daughter. Let me tell you about your past. Okay, and I think he says this to all of us. How I loved you before you were born. How I longed for you. How I rejoiced over you. And then he showed me, it was like a picture of, um, oh, what do you call those um, books with the pictures in it? You know, the photo album, thank you. Yes, and I'm, I'm seeing this picture of a photo album and I'm seeing all these different pictures where I didn't realize he was in my life. And for me, um, he said, okay, so it was this picture of he's, I'm on his lap and I'm beside, kind of sitting beside him on the couch and we're looking through this photo album together and he's pointing to this picture. I was there. I was in this one. I was with you in this one. I was there. I watched you. I held you. I rejoiced over you. I, read, I watched you read. I watched you play. I love to hear you sing. And a couple of the pictures, there was one I shared last time 
um, about, remember I had said that I was in the yard and the, I was hanging up the clothes and one of my um, extended relatives had just kind of made this like, that's ridiculous that you would even think that God loves you. And so I'm looking at this picture and I see the picture of me and I'm hanging the clothes on the line and I can see myself, my hair was real light at that time and it's um, just glistening in the sun and God is just saying, I was there, I was watching you, I loved that you were singing to me. I was rejoicing over you. And again, he said, listen to me, daughter. And I'm saying this over myself. Listen to me, daughter. I love you. I'm so proud of you. And that's what God says over all of us. I'm so proud of you. You are mine and I love you. And the next one was uh, when I was a kid, again, I loved music and we had something called the music machine. I don't know if any of you know that, but um, it was these songs of all the fruits of the spirit. And then they had this little book that you could look through. And I would just sit in my um, living room and I would lay between the couch and um, the coffee table. And it was just kind of this little tiny space where I would be and I would listen to it and just really, um, I enjoyed it, but I didn't realize that God was there with me. Does that make sense what I'm saying? Yeah. And so again, it was just this picture and I see it and God's saying, I was there and he's actually holding me and he's saying, I enjoyed you enjoying the music because God enjoys us enjoying the things we enjoy. Does that make sense? Mm-hmm. Sometimes we think, oh, I don't know. I mean, does anybody like what I like? And maybe you know, I'm all by myself. But God actually enjoys us enjoying the things he's made us to enjoy. And so he said, again, listen to me, daughter. I love you. I'm so, so proud of you. You are mine, and I love you. And then the next one, I was at um, a basketball game, and I'm cheering. I used to be a cheerleader for basketball and football. And again, I have this picture, and God is in the stands. I can see him, and he's in the stands, and he's cheering for me, and he's saying, I was there. I was there cheering you on as you were cheering. I was cheering and clapping and laughing and having fun as you were doing those things. In the last one, um, was a picture of God just cradling a baby, and I knew it was me. It was a daddy cradling a baby, and he was just whispering into my ear, I love you. You are mine. You are precious. I cherish you. I waited for you. I longed for you. I wanted you. I'm so proud to be your dad and I'm proud that you're my daughter. And I just wanted to start with that or son because that's how God feels about all of us. And I really want to encourage you, if that's something that you feel like, oh man, there's something in me that sometimes the emotion comes up like, I'm not sure if God really feels that way about me. Or sometimes we push that away like, oh my goodness, I don't even know. But if that kind of stuff like, man, I want to feel that God, I want to know that for myself, I really encourage you to ask him. Because I'm just in worship and the thought hits me, where were you? Where were you, God? And I asked and like I said, I didn't even realize he was answering until I started like in the second or third picture. And I'm like, man, yes, he's answering right there. So I just want to encourage you, he answers. He loves to love on us. And I encourage us to ask, just to ask him. And um, just a reminder, too, in those things, those were times where, yes, does God speak all the time? He t talks to me when I'm doing the dishes. He talks to me when I'm in the car. He talks to me all the time. But these really intimate, special ones are those times where I've set everything aside. I'm just, it's just him and me. There's no distractions. And I'm asking him a question or I'm just worshiping. And all of a sudden, it's like, whew, there it is. It's just me and God and the answers to the questions and the experiences come. And so I want to encourage us. Sometimes we think, man, you know, God can talk to me anywhere. I don't know why I have to put everything aside. But, but those really healing times for me has been in those times where it's just me and God, time and space together. Yeah. All right. So hmm. God has really been healing even right there, you can see my view of him as God the Father. And um, one of the things, oh goodness, I'm just going to go again, just be really honest about where my belief system was and where it's coming now. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Um, let's just pray. Lord Jesus, I thank you. God, we thank you. We thank you, God, that you love us so, so much. God, I thank you for your overwhelming love, Lord. 
We thank you that you are in this room, God, that you are with us every moment, that your Holy Spirit is right here, even sitting beside us, cradling us right now, God. I ask, Lord Jesus, that you would touch each person individually exactly where they need to be spoken to, God, those intimate places, God, that need to be healed up, God. We just give those places over to you, and we thank you that you are doing an amazing healing work in each one of us, Lord. We honor you, we praise you, in Jesus' name, amen. Amen. Okay, so um, the parable of the talents. Oh, my goodness. So I used to read this, and I'm telling you, I would read it with such fear. Um, and just a side note, um, when we talk about talents, it really is bags of money. I don't know if you guys know that, but we read the word talents, but it's really about finances. But that's a whole nother um, teaching. But I always read it with fear um, because... I read it as, again, because I didn't have that healthy view of God as my good, good father. I read it as, oh my goodness, if I don't invest my talents, if I don't bring this great harvest, then I'm going to be one that gets thrown out. I'm going to get beaten. I'm going to get thrown into outer darkness. And so it was just this like constant fear, constant anxiety, constant stress going on in my life. And um, in that parable... When the master comes back, he says, okay, the one he had given five talents, and then he doubled it. Oh, you're a good and faithful servant. Then the next one, he gets ten, um, two, and then he doubles it. Oh, you're a good and faithful servant. And then the one that has one is so afraid, and so he buries it. And I knew that I had fear, and so I always identified as that one. Oh, hmm, I must be burying my talents. Oh, my goodness, I'm going to get kicked out. I'm going to be beaten. Okay, and that's exactly, oh man, when the Lord told me this, I'm like, what in the world, Lord? It's exactly the mindset of that servant. That's what that servant's mindset was. He said, well, I knew you'd be a harsh master. And the master said, oh, huh, that's who you thought I was? That's who you knew that I was? And then he was judged on what that mindset was. And I realized for myself that I had that same mindset. It was so not about I'm going to be punished if I don't double my giftings. Why? Because it's not about me. I don't bring the increase. God brings the increase. Yeah. And really that, that whole ending of that and I realize that there's a lot of different applications that we can get out of any parable, any story in the Bible. Okay, I'm taking one application out of this. Um, but for me, the application was, do I really know who God is? I had a view of, he's harsh, he's mean. If I don't do it exactly right, I'm going to get thrown out. Okay, And that's not what the story, uh, at least my, um, what I got out of that is not about that. It really is about who is God. And he is a loving God. He's a loving father. And... Um, I was going into 1 John 4, where it talks about perfect love casts out all fear. And why? Because fear has to do with punishment. And that's everything that I was afraid of. I was afraid that I was going to be punished, that I wasn't good enough. Again, everything was on me. I'm thinking all about myself instead of who God is. And um, I just want to read a little bit of this and kind of go through my processing of these verses. So um, 1 John 4 in the NIV says, there's no fear in love, but fear. Perfect love casts out or drives out fear because fear has to do with punishment. The one who fears is not made perfect in love. And again, reading that with a mindset of fear, I heard, oh, hmm, well, I have fear. There's no fear in love. I must not have any love. Then I heard, well, perfect love drives out fear. Well, I can't drive out my own fear. It's not perfect. So there's still something wrong with me because fear has to do with punishment. No one who fears is made perfect in love. Oh, well, I still have fear. I'm not perfect. I'm going to get thrown out, beaten. I just had this such a negative view. So then I'm reading it in the New Living Translation, and it says such love. Again, what love is that? God's love. And so I'm going to go to verse 16. We know how much God loves us, and we have put our trust in his love. God is love, and all who live in love live in God, and God lives in them. Okay, then I was thinking, oh, okay, so in um, John 15, where he talks about remain in me, I am the vine, you are the branches. Hmm. As we live in God, our love grows more perfect. Now, still I'm thinking, hmm, 
my love has to grow perfect. Hmm, there's something still that is on me. So we will not be, okay, so as we live in God, our love grows more perfect. So we will not be afraid on the day of judgment. Lord, I want that. We can face him with confidence because we live like Jesus here in this world. Well, how did Jesus live? Jesus lived knowing who he was. He knew he was the son of God. When he was baptized and he was, um, came back up out of the water, what happened? The heavens opened. His father said, this is my beloved son in whom I am well pleased. And then the Holy Spirit descended on him like a dove. Then it says, such love has no fear because perfect love expels all fear. I'm still thinking this is something has to do with me. If we are afraid, it's for fear of punishment. And then it says, this shows that we have not fully experienced his perfect love. Hmm. You're right, Lord. I'm thinking, I haven't experienced your love. I've known about it. I've read about it. But I've read it with this mindset still of fear. But it talks about when we're fearful, it's because we haven't yet fully experienced his perfect love. Then I want to read it in the Amplified Bible. And this one takes the um, words and it just builds phrases about the real depth of meaning. So it says here, we have come to know by personal observation and experience. And that's what I talked about last time. And that's what I'm talking about this time. Personal observation and experience. And have believed with deep, consistent faith the love which God has for us. There is, we have to experience it. I needed to experience it. I need to personally observe it in other people. That's one of the ways that God has used to set me free to see, wow, you know what? Joe has accepted God's love and Frank has accepted God's love and Jessica and all these people that I see, wow, that's how it looks to accept the love of the Father. That's what it looks like. When somebody says, yes, Lord, I want to experience you. I want to open up every part of me and see you and feel you and experience you. That's what it looks like. Yeah. So personal observation and experience. And have believed with deep, consistent faith the love which God has for us. For God is love, and the one who abides in love abides in God. And God abides continually in him. It's not about my, me doing something. God is love. I abide in him, and he continually abides in me. I've heard several people asking me, you know, as I walk alongside people, I don't know, I mean, I think, I know God loves me, but, and I feel it when I'm this, when I'm worshiping, or wish, when I'm serving, or when I think I'm doing the right thing, or when I'm at church, or when I'm, but I don't know if God is with me when I'm driving my car. I'm, do, I'm purposely doing the wrong thing. I'm making a mistake maybe. All these times that we get so thinking that, you know, maybe God leaves us, maybe the Holy Spirit leaves us. No, it says right here, hmm, the one who abides in love abides in God, and God abides continually in him. In this union and fellowship with him, love is completed and perfected in us so that we may have confidence in the day of judgment with assurance and boldness to face him. Because as he is, so are we in this world. Again, how was Jesus? He ministered out of love. He knew who he was. He had the identity of, I am a son of God. I am the son of God. And he knew that, and that out of that he ministered, out of that he healed, out of that he loved, out of that he provided, out of that he did miracles. Because as he is, so are we in this world. There is no, and here it is, there is no fear in love. Dread does not exist. But perfect, complete, full-grown love drives out fear. Because fear involves the expectation of divine punishment. So the one who is afraid, that was me, of God's judgment, is not perfected in love, and here it is, has not grown into a sufficient understanding of God's love. It is so not, oh my goodness, my love has to be perfect, otherwise God's not going to accept me. It is right here, is not perfected in love means has not grown into a sufficient understanding of God's love that personal knowledge, that experience, that day-to-day. -day. God, just remind me again, how much do you love me? What do you think about me? What do you see when you look at me? And I so want to encourage us that 
If we want to really go after fear and just totally banish it and get rid of it, the key, I think the key for me anyway, right here is this, just accepting the Father's love, experiencing the Father's love, asking day after day, oh, Lord, what else? What else do you have for me? How do you see me? God, even I'm standing back there. Okay, what do you want to say? How do you see me? Oh, yeah, you're right beside me. We're right here together. We're doing this together. Mm -hmm. All right, so another testimony, um, again, of God healing up my view of him as Father. Um, Another way that I know at least the Lord works with me in that, like I keep saying, you know, the thousand ways to set you free is through worship music. I know there's a ton of ways that God uses, but for one of, one of them for me is that. And um, a while ago, I don't know how long ago even it was now, but we were just constantly playing that Good, Good Father song. And I would go home and during the day, you know, I play music when I'm getting ready or in my kitchen or showering or whatever. I would just play it over and over and over. Lord, just minister to me. And sometimes I would just be crying and other times I would just be worshiping. And it wasn't even um, that there were words necessarily. It was that God was just doing a work in me and I would just play it. And yes, I received that, Lord. Okay, yes, I know you were a good, good father. I know it doesn't feel like it because of all this junk, but God, I know that you are. I need you to show me. I need you to speak it to me inside, way in my depths of my heart. And so I just really allowed God to minister to me in that. And um, one of the lyrics, I've heard a thousand stories of what they think you're like. And in that, I would ask, okay, Lord, hmm, I know what people have said you're like. I know what I've thought you were like. What's the truth? And we talk about that so much here, but Lord, what is the truth that you want me to know about you? What lie have I believed for all these years that I was so bound up in fear? And he would just start revealing it to me. And then I would just renounce that. Okay, Lord, I repent. God, I repent of believing that lie about you. And remember, repent, all it means is I was going this way, believing this lie, and now I'm turning this way and believing the truth. Okay, so there was, I mean, sometimes there was crying, but there wasn't like every time I fall on the floor sobbing, oh my goodness. But it's a repentance of, hmm, I used to think this way. I want to believe the truth and think and believe this way over here. And one of the lies that I was believing, hmm, is that God was a tease. Yeah, so healing up my view of God as a tease. I grew up with a lot of teasing in um, just aspects of my life. And I just want to remind us again that as children and, um, yeah, just as kids especially, we can process things, um, not necessarily how they are. Okay, so my parents are wonderful, spectacular. My family is wonderful. My extended family is wonderful. So this is not anything about that. But I picked up something thinking, hmm, okay, this, I see this, I see this. It must be that God is this way. Does that make sense? So um, I grew up with a lot of that whole teasing. And the lie that I picked up is God is cruel. God is cruel, and so he'll say, hmm, oh, here it is right here. And then as soon as you grab for it, he'll pull it out of your hand. Or that, you, that he would give a gift, and then as soon as you open it, it would not be what you wanted. It would not be a good gift. It would be something that would be negative. So one of the things that God used to heal that up I was actually listening to um, a teaching online, and this lady was sharing her testimony, and it was the same thing. And at the end, she said, we just want to minister to people, and I wrote it down here, who believe the lie that God is a tease, that he puts things out there like a carrot on a stick, but he always yanks it away right before you get it. And I just knew, I just knew, oh, God, that is me. That's the lie of believing. Just like when Teresa was up here and she said, you know, there are people in this room who believe the lie about their voice. When you hear the lie that you're believing, it's like, oh, man, that's it right there. I know it, and I don't want that anymore. So I knew that that was me. So the first thing I did, what did I do? Repent. God, again, I repent of believing that lie and know that's not who you are, but here it feels like it's who you are. So I repent of that lie. I know you're not a tease. 
And God, what, what is the truth in this? The truth is you can be trusted. The truth is you are a good father. The truth is that you do give good gifts. Then what did I do? Forgive the people, all the people. Okay, Lord, who, who and what? What circumstances seemed to reinforce this lie that I was believing? So forgave all of those people. And it's not a blame of the person. When we forgive, it's just simply releasing. I release that person. Lord, I'm opening myself up to heal that hurt. I'm just admitting, God, this really hurt when that happened. I forgive that person. And then I just release blessing over them because it's just as much about blessing that person as it is about me getting free. Okay, so I want to bless them. I want to release good, um, great things over them. So replace it with the truth that God is a good father. And, um, hmm, and it still comes up sometimes um, because it's things that are common to us sometimes come up. Sometimes it feels familiar. And so, again, I just go through that whole process. Um, renouncing it. I'm not holding on to that anymore. I'm choosing to believe the truth. And um, one of the things in that is God, through that picture of him not being a tease, he is actually healing up my relationship with the Holy Spirit because God says that the Holy Spirit is a gift from him. And when I believe that he doesn't give good gifts, then how can the Holy Spirit be a good gift? The Holy Spirit is, was actually scary to me. So you guys are really hearing a lot of like really personal stuff here. So anyway, ah, thank you, Lord Jesus, that you're healing me. So anyway, just being really real here. Oh, thank you. So in this teasing lie, the lie that God's gifts aren't good. <clears throat> so Matthew 7 says, Ask, and it will be given to you. Seek, and you will find. Knock, and the door will be opened to you. For everyone who asks receives. The one who seeks finds. And the one who knocks, the door will be open. Then, which of you, if your son asks for bread, will give him a stone? Or if he asks for fish, will give him a snake? If you then, though you are evil, meaning sinful people, know how to give good gifts to your children, how much more will your Father in heaven give good gifts to those who ask him? Then, um, in Luke 11, it's a, the, kind of the parallel passage. It says, And so I tell you, keep on asking and you will receive what you ask for. Keep on seeking and you will find. Keep on knocking and the door will be opened to you. For everyone who asks receives, everyone who seeks finds, and to everyone who knocks the door will be open. You fathers, if your children ask for a fish, do you give them a snake instead? Or if they ask for an egg, do you give them a scorpion? Of course not. So if you sinful people know how to give good gifts to your children, how much more will your heavenly Father give the Holy Spirit to those who ask him? And um, it was... Um, the Lord's been doing this in me for a while, but it was actually, I think, maybe two or three worship nights ago, and I'm sitting here, and um, I just it was a rough time, and so I'm just listening to the Lord and just like, oh my gosh, Lord, what do you want to say? And he brings this scripture to my mind, and what he reminded me of is just what I said, that the Holy Spirit is my gift. He's my gift to you. He is all the things I say is he's comforter. He is um, the one that walks alongside you. He's the one who brings you into all truth. He's the one who teaches you. He's the one who um, is, is the deposit inside of you that I have said, I've deposited him in you. It's the promise that you are actually mine, that you are sealed by me for the day of redemption. For you're my kid. How do you know it? Partly because the Holy Spirit is living inside of you. He's not scary. He's actually really good. And so John 16, he just reminded me of this. Um, so John 15 is where he's talking again about vine and branches abiding in him. And then he goes into, this is Jesus talking, I'm going to leave and I'm going to send the comforter. And he says, I have many more things to tell you, but you can't bear to hear them right now. But when he, the spirit of truth comes, he will guide you into all truth. And that was one of the lies I was believing too, that, hmm, I don't know if I can trust the Holy Spirit because what is he going to make me do? What is he going to say? Am I going to look ridiculous? All these just like crazy lies that I had picked up throughout my life and different, different experiences that I had. 
But Jesus says, when he comes, the spirit of truth, he will guide you into all truth, which is full and complete truth. The Holy Spirit is not a trickster either. He speaks truth. He speaks life. He is worthy to be trusted. He is God. He is God. Hmm. It says, for he will not speak on his own initiative, but he will speak whatever he hears from the Father, the message regarding the Son, and he will disclose to you what is to come in the future. Even we think, oh my goodness, prophecy is scary. It says right here, he's going to disclose to us what is to come. He's the one, he's the, he speaks only truth all the time. It says, he will glorify me and honor me because he, the Holy Spirit, will take from what is mine and will disclose it to you. This is Jesus talking. And Jesus is the exact representation of the Father. And so when the Holy Spirit takes from what was Jesus's and gives to us, he's giving us all the truth, all the goodness of who God is as our good, good dad. And he is giving that to us, a deposit inside of us. It says, all things that the Father has are mine. Because of this, I said that the Spirit will take from what is mine and will reveal it to you. Yeah. Yeah. And so God has just been really healing up um, all of these different, um, hmm, just showing me the lies that I believed about who he is as Father, who he is as Holy Spirit, who he is even as the Son. Although Jesus, you know, we talk a lot of times people have an easier time, I had an easier time with Jesus, but just through all of this, God has been healing that up. And I can just see in myself huge difference in, man, you know what, God, every time you just show me one of the lies I'm believing, it's not a scary thing. It's not a, oh my goodness, I uh, con condemning like I believe this lie. It's a freedom. It's a new level of freedom. And so I just want to encourage us again, keep asking, keep seeking after because all these things that are coming up, are good things, even though sometimes you think, oh my goodness, I have to tell them again, like, ah, I was believing this other lie. But you know what? Just like Joe said today, hey man, we're all in this together. We are all family. So it is a good thing to just share this stuff, to speak it out and say, you know what? I was believing that lie. Because sometimes people go, I didn't even know. Like the lady whose teaching I was listening to, I didn't have the vocabulary. I didn't have the words to say, I think God is a tease and he's not to be trusted. But I felt it in here. I just didn't have the words for it. But when I heard her testimony and she said, whoa, that's a lie somebody's believing, I'm like, oh, that's it. That's the key right there. So I just want to encourage us to share our testimonies because so many times the things that God's doing in us, he wants to do and he wants to heal up in somebody else too. Yeah, oh, and then Romans 12, it says, Do not be conformed to the pattern of this world, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind. And I was thinking about, too, the pattern of this world, one of them is that God is mean and God is harsh. And I don't want any longer to conform to that pattern. I want to be renewed in my mind to the truth that God is a good father. And another pattern of this world is that the Holy Spirit is scary. He's going to make you do weird stuff or you're going to, you know, he's going to trick you or you're going to ask for, you know, his spirit and you're actually going to get, I mean, people just like, I've heard it all. We're going to get a demon or, I mean, it's just like crazy stuff. And you know what? That's a pattern of the world. And that's from the enemy because the enemy doesn't want us to have that close relationship with Father God, with the Holy Spirit, and with Jesus. He would rather us, okay, if we are saved and going to heaven, okay, but he doesn't want us to be bringing other people. He doesn't want us to have boldness from the Holy Spirit. He doesn't want us to go out there and be effective in ministry. So all of those things, I think, man, you know what, God, continue to renew my mind because I want that. I remember I was standing up here a few um, testimonies Sundays ago, and I'm like, oh, I want to be one who prays for people in the grocery store. I want to be one who has that boldness, and I no longer want to be conformed to those patterns of this world. I really want my mind renewed, and that's what God has been doing. That's what he's been doing in me. Thank you, Lord. Hmm, yes, thank you, thank you, thank you. All right, I had just uh, lots of other testimonies, but I think we're going to stop there. It's kind of a dividing line, and we have five minutes left. So I just want to pray over us real quick. So thank you, Lord. Hmm. Father, we thank you. God, I thank you, I thank you, I thank you, I thank you that you are a good father. 
I thank you that your gifts are always good. God, that your gifts are always good. I thank you that you are wooing your children, that you are bringing us, God, into new levels and new relationships with you, Lord God. I thank you that we can trust you. We can trust you in every area of our lives, God. We can trust you hmm, with our families, and we can trust you with our finances, we can trust you with our giftings, and we can trust you with every part of us, our safety and our protection in every part of us, God. We thank you for that, God. We thank you. God, I thank you that you're doing a work in each one of us, Lord. We open ourselves up, God, every part. Just be totally and completely transformed by you. We say yes and amen to everything that you have for us, God. Hmm. And Lord God, I just pray that as we go home, God, throughout um, this week and in the weeks to come, Lord Jesus, that you would just so sweetly as you do, so graciously, God, Bring up those lies that we believe, Lord Jesus, hmm. that you would show us, oh, honey, this is a lie that you're believing. Would you like to replace it with truth? And that we would just leap and jump and say, yes, yes, yes. What truth do you have for me? Because I want to believe the truth all the way, all the time. So we thank you, God. We praise you. You are so good. I just release truth over us. I release courage over us to ask the questions, to ask the questions, what lie am I believing? Hmm. And faith, that faith would rise up in us, that we would believe you, God, all the time, that we would take you at your word, hmm. that we would trust you. God, we love you. We praise you. You are so good. We honor you today, God, in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Amen.